You're listening to Crowning Ignorant Kings, a podcast for citizens with light minds who love God, follow Christ, and have a desire to be an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven on earth. We are John and Charlene Donaldson. We're teachers building a kingdom community. Thank you again for joining us. Now let's adjust our crown. The key to effective living is the capacity and ability to manage an ex the unexpected and, the, and the also the expected. That's the key to life. Number two, success is measured by your ability to maintain personal balance in times of turmoil. Personal balance. Keep your balance. Number three, maturity in life is measured by your capacity to respond effectively to tragedy and chaos. That's how you measure your maturity in life. It's, it's not who you are in good times that tests your maturity. It's what happens when things don't work out. Or when something happens suddenly you didn't expect. And so the, the faith that we have in the kingdom of God is a faith that can handle the unexpected yeah. with balance. Yeah. We don't panic. We don't quit. We don't give up. We don't surrender to the situation. We manage it and manage ourselves right out of it by the grace of God. And this is the heart of the kingdom faith. In other words, the greatest challenge in life is to our faith. Tragedy and crisis shakes the foundation of your belief system. And that is why doubt sets in. Now, let me just say something about faith and doubt. You do not believe something until you doubt it first. This is, this is um, a Theology 105. It's a little heavier. Okay, let me say it again. You cannot believe something until you doubt it first. What did I say? This is why your son and daughter have to test the faith you gave them. Because that's your faith. So when they have to do their little, you know, break away and make their own decisions and act like they is everything, you know, and they get their own life, that's important. You did that too, remember? Write this down. Nothing is yours until you understand it. I can give you my information, but it still ain't yours. It's still mine. I just gave it to you. You, you don't own it yet. It becomes yours when you gotta test it to see if it works for you. So your faith is proven by doubt. Faith means belief. In other words, the devil comes against you with tests to attack your belief. He comes to test whether you believe what you've been saying all along. And he hits you usually so hard that you doubt it for a minute. And then you say like Peter, I really don't want to follow you, you know, Jesus, but <laughs> we have discovered that you got the words of life. In other words, <laughs> we already thought you were crazy, but we can't find a body else like you so we can go with you. That's when the faith becomes yours. I don't believe in God because my father believes in God. I discovered God for myself. My faith had to be tested. Ladies and gentlemen, therefore the greatest threat to your faith is unexplained tragedy. It's when you can't explain what's happening and you still got to believe. When you become like Job, even though he slay me. Yet will I trust him. That's faith. Real faith is when there's nothing left to believe on except what he said. Now that's faith. There's no evidence around except what he said. In other words, the fight in tragedy is for your faith. When death occurs, when you lose a job, when your company falls apart, when the bank repossesses your house, when you got to go back and rent, all that stuff. God is saying, I'm watching you. I, you know, I let you go and you're checking something because when this thing turns around you're going to be like Job seven times throughout the year. 
You know, let me say something. Let me say something about Job. Job is an interesting fellow. I like Job. Job become one of my best friends now because you see, Job helped me understand life. God told the devil. By the way, the devil asked God to test Job. The devil came to God. You read the book of Job. The first chapter says, and the devil came to God and said to, to God, Job only follows you because of what you gave him. This is heavy, eh? And most of you all probably have that same problem. You're here to get blessed this morning. How about coming here to get test this morning? He says, you only have Job loving you because you got him blessed with all them farms and sheep and goats and his daughter, his wife is happy. And he says, Lord, I guarantee, the devil says, I guarantee if, if you allow me to touch the things and remove them, he'll curse you to your face. And God answered, I know my servant Job. I wonder if God could say that about you right now in the midst of death and tragedy and losing stuff. Can God say, I know my servant Cheryl? I know my boy, Junior. I wonder if you can say that. Oh, he ain't sure. And then God said to Satan, Go. Take everything he has, except you can't take his life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I don't mind losing a house and a car, but not everything. God said, Take everything. By the way, whatever you have, God gave it to you. The devil don't give nothing. And whatever the devil took from you, God allowed him. And whatever God gave you, he can give you seven times more afterwards. He got all the stuff. What he gave you, what he ain't give you yet. So I got a feeling that when you survive this test, you're going to make everybody who laughed at you ashamed. Anybody want to scream for a second? There are people... Who talking about you right now but don't worry about them just tell yourself I going through this test I coming through this test I'm gonna make it through this test I'm gonna make it why because God made a promise when you come through this I'll bless you seven times more than you had anybody ready for seven time life hallelujah I say seven times life a seven times life a seven times life God says Job will not break the devil killed all of his daughters. Killed all of his cattle. He lost his farm. Repossessed. Donkey dead. No car. In them days that's a car, a donkey. He lost the donkeys. He had to walk. Catch jitney. This wealthy man catching jitney. Everybody laughing. And then Job friends kicked in. Boy, you still following that God? And most of the book is about the three friends, you know. And all them, and all them had all kind of prophecy. They said, you know, the Lord doing this because you are evil. The Lord doing it because you ain't living right. God was laughing at them. God said, uh-uh. I doing this because I try and embarrass all of y'all. I want to show you all that y'all ain't got no faith. Job got faith. And the way I prove faith is by tests. And then when they finish justifying all of his problems the book ends like this and job said to his friends you are ignorant you do not know the lord and david and job said these words i'll never forget these words he says do you think i serve god for something that's in job job says, job says i serve the lord for nothing now that's faith if god heals my, my mother, I'll believe him. God said, then you can't go with me. Because I might need your mother today. You can't serve the Lord for nothing. And then Job says, because even though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I say to my Freeport family, whatever you're going through, God is watching everything. God knew what's going to happen this week. And he watched this. He ain't concerned with Mark, you know. He's checking you all out. Let me see how y'all can handle this. Let me see if your faith is built on a worship leader that ain't there. Here's the verse you can go home with. 
And when Job had passed the test, the Lord turned the captivity of Job and gave him seven times more than he had before. Read this verse to me, please, out loud. 1 Timothy 6, 11. Read. But you, man of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. By the way, each one of them words describe Dr. Mark Bethel as a man. When I read this, every word reminded me of him. He was gentle. He had an endurance. One time Mark was in the office working and Mark fell over on top of the computer with a seizure. They got him back up. He said, I'm okay. I got to finish what I started. Endurance. He said, take me to church. I won't sit in the back, but I got to be in church. Some of you all ain't got nothing wrong with you. You don't go come to church. Endurance. Thank you for listening to Crowning Ignorant Kings, where we are cultivating a kingdom community. Please sign up for our podcast, download, like, and share. Look for us on your social media platforms. If you'd like to reach out to us, please send us an email at crowningignorantkings at gmail.com.